Hello. Welcome back. I am a Tolkien fan, and I have done two videos on this channel talking about Tolkien elves from the Silmarillion. Well, today I wanted to read from TolkienGateway.net about an elf who is perhaps a little more familiar. Today I will be reading about Elrond. So, let's get started. But my memory reaches back even to the elder days. Eärendil deal was my sire, who was born in Gondolin before its fall. And my mother was Elwing, daughter of Dior, son of Luthien, of Doriath. I have seen three ages in the west of the world, and many defeats, and many fruitless victories. Elrond, in the Fellowship of the Ring, the Council of Elrond. Elrond was the half-elven son of Eärendil and Elwing, the father of Arwen and the lord of Rivendell, who consistently fought against Sauron throughout the Second and Third Ages. Having been born in Beleriand towards the end of the First Age, Elrond ever opposed Sauron and strove against him throughout the Second Age, helping to bring about Sauron's defeat in the War of the Last Alliance as Gil-galad's herald. Elrond inherited Gil-galad's elven ring, Vilja, and, during the Third Age, he fought against the Witch-King of Angmar, and, as a member of the White Council, expelled the necromancer from Dol Guldur, who was Sauron in another guise. Towards the end of the Third Age, he was the foster father to Aragorn, as he had been to Arathorn before him. Aragorn went on to marry Elrond's daughter, Arwen. After the destruction of the One Ring, Elrond sent, or rather, sailed west with Gandalf, Bilbo, Frodo, and Galadriel. Their passing marked the end of the Third Age and the beginning of the Fourth. Elrond is one of the most prominent, significant, and recognizable characters in J.R.R. Tolkien's Legendarium, appearing in The Hobbit, The Lord of the Rings, The Silmarillion, and Unfinished Tales. He was critical in providing Thorin and company the information they needed to enter the Lonely Mountain and his Council of Elrond brought about the creation of the Fellowship of the Ring, which ultimately resulted in the destruction of the One Ring and the final defeat of Sauron. He was as noble and fair as an elf lord, as strong as a warrior, as wise as a wizard, as venerable as a king of dwarves, and as kind as summer. The Hobbit, a short rest. Elrond is described, seeming ageless, resembling neither old nor young. However, one could see in his face the memories and 
experiences of thousands of years. He looked venerable, both like an old king, a wise wizard, and an experienced warrior in his prime. Elrond is described as dark-haired, while his eyes were gray, shining like starlight. He could be seen wearing a circlet of silver. His parents were Eärendil and Elwing. He was thus half elven. Eärendil was the child of the mortal Duor and the elf Idril, while Elwing was the grandchild of Baden, a man, and Luthien, daughter of the elf king Thingol, and the Maya Melian. Consequently, Elrond was descended from all three tribes of the elves, Vanyar and Noldor through Idril, Sindar through Luthien. He was also descended from Amaya and all three houses of the Edain, Hador, Hale, and Beor. Elrond was born at the havens of Sirion late in the First Age. His parents were Eärendil and Elwing, and he had a twin brother, Elros, who later became the first king of Númenor. When the sons of Feanord attacked the havens of Sirion, Elwing was taken by Ulmo. The twins were carried off, but later found near a waterfall, and they were named as such. Elrond was discovered in a cave. Taken captive by Maglor, they were subsequently raised by him. Following the War of Wrath, because of his half-elven heritage, the Valar gave Elrond and his brother a choice to be counted among the kindred of elves or of men. Elrond chose to belong to the firstborn while Elros chose to become mortal. It was Elros who voyaged over the sea to Númenor, following the star of Eärendil, whereas Elrond remained among the elves and carried on the lineage of King Elwë. Elrond subsequently remained in Lindon with Gilgalat, where he became known as a healer and a lore master. A fair being, calling himself Annatar, emissary of the Valar, came seeking entrance to Lindon during the Second Age. Elrond and Gilgalat sensed that he was not what he seemed. And denied him. They were correct, as was proven in the later War of the Elves and Sauron. In Second Age 1695, Gilgalad sent Elrond to aid Eregion. Elrond's forces came too late and proved too small to defend Eregion. While Sauron sent most of his army west to attack Lindon, he left a strong detachment behind to contain Elrond. In two years, Eregion was laid waste, and Elrond, along with the Noldor survivors, fled far north. There, he established the stronghold of Imladris. Many more refugees joined Elrond's host as Sauron ravaged Eriador 
during the course of the war. By the second age, 1700, Yimladris, despite being besieged, was the only part of Eriador not under Sauron's control. It was liberated by Gilgalad's and Darmina's Deer's forces. After Sauron's defeat, oh, pardon me, my phone bounced me out. So we were talking about what happened after Sauron's defeat. Let's find where we were. I don't know why that happened. How very strange. Now, my phone won't scroll. Well, let's just sleep it and see if we can get what we were reading back. Technology is never as reliable as you think that it should be, is it? Whenever you watch television, if you watch sci-fi, or even modern police procedural dramas, the heroes often use advanced technology to win the day. This technology almost always works perfectly, unless the plot calls for their technology to malfunction for some reason. It would be great if we lived in that future. Okay, I have got the article back. So, let's find where I was. I was talking about the fall of Sauron. After Sauron's defeat, a council was held establishing that Imladris should be maintained as an elvish stronghold and appointing Elrond Gilgalad's vice-regent. In Eriador, passing the ring Vilia to him. Elrond marched with Gilgalad and Elendil during the War of the Last Alliance, serving as Gilgalad's herald. He was present during the last battle of that war, witnessing the deaths of Gilgalad and Elendil. When Isildur cut the One Ring from Sauron's hand at the conclusion of the battle, Elrond and Girdan advised Isildur to destroy the ring, but Isildur refused their counsel. Elrond subsequently returned to Rivendell, which prospered in the coming years with the aid of the Ring of Air. Vilya, which Elrond had received from Gilgalad. It has been argued that, following Gilgalad's death, Elrond had the right to become High King of the Noldor, but he never claimed that title. Indeed, after the Second Age ended, there were very few left while well, very few Noldor left to rule. Following Isildur's death, Elrond received the shards of Narsil, which he preserved for many years. He began his long tradition of fostering the heirs of Isildur by helping to raise Isildur's son, Valandil, who had been left in Rivendell during the War of the Last Alliance. 
in third age 109, Aurond married Gelebrian, the daughter of Galadriel and Geleborn. Their first children, the twins Eladan and Eurohir, were born in 130, and their daughter, Arwen, in 241. During the late reign of Arveleg I, Rivendell was besieged by Angmar. After an incursion by Angmar into Eriador in Third Age 1409, the elven folk of Rivendell joined those of Lindon in subduing the power of the Witch King for many years. Centuries later, when the northern kingdom fell, Elrond took the other heirlooms of Arnor, the scepter of Annuminas, and the ring of Barahir, into his keeping, holding them for the one who would eventually be able to reclaim the throne of Arnor. Elrond and others of the wise were joined by the wizard Gandalf, who was sent by the Valar from the west. As they decided, Gandalf invaded Dol Guldur. The necromancer withdrew, and the watchful peace began. In Third Age 2463, the wise formed the White Council, with the wizard Saruman as its head. Elrond was later separated from his wife when she was taken by orcs. Their sons rescued her, but Elrond was unable to heal her mentally, and she decided to leave for the west in 2510. In Third Age 2851, the White Council met to decide whether to act on Gandalf's discovery of the identity of the necromancer, as Sauron. But Saruman dissuaded the others from acting upon Gandalf's revelation. In Third Age 2933, Elrond took Aragorn as his foster son in Rivendell, and had Arwen live in Lothlorien with her grandmother. Elrond named Aragorn Estem, which means hope, and concealed his heritage from him until he came of age. When Aragorn became an adult, Elrond gave him the ring of Barahir and the shards of Narsil, foreseeing that Aragorn might be the one to claim the thrones of Gondor and Arnor. When Aragorn fell in love with Arwen, Elrond revealed to him that Arwen shared the choice of the half-elven, and that one or the other of them would ultimately be parted from her forever. Elrond insisted that Arwen could not marry Aragorn until he became king of both Gondor and Arnor. In Third Age 2941, Elrond welcomed Thorin and company into his home, the last homely house for the wild. On Midsummer's Eve, the night before the dwarves, Bilbo and Gandalf continued on their journey eastward. Elrond examined the swords which they had found in the troll's cave. He read the runes and revealed that Thorin's sword was called Orkrist, the goblin cleaver, and that Gandalf's sword was named Glamdring, the foe hammer. 
he told them that the blades were elven swords from the ancient city of Gondolin, destroyed long ago. He then looked at Thor's map and found that there were moon letters upon it. By the light of the moon, in that midsummer's eve, he could read the words, Five feet high the door, and three may walk abreast, and stand by the grey stone when the thrush knocks, and the setting sun with the last light of Durin's day will shine upon the keyhole. This information proved vital for Bilbo and the dwarves to enter the lonely mountain through its secret entrance. During that same year, the White Council assailed Dol Guldur and rid Mirkwood of the necromancer's presence. Upon Bilbo and Gandalf's return to Rivendell, Elrond and the Grey Wizard discussed this and the events that had taken place at the Lonely Mountain. They both agreed that it would be better if the necromancer were banished from the world altogether. The White Council last met in Third Age 2953, when Gandalf expressed his concerns that the One Ring was Bilbo's ring, which he had found in Goblin Town. Saruman quieted Gandalf, insisting that the ring had been swept out to sea. And we note that wasn't true, don't we? When Frodo first left the Shire, the One Ring, it was always his intention to go to Rivendell to seek the advice of Elrond. Indeed, in the letter he left at Bree, Gandalf counseled him to do so. After Elrond healed Frodo of his wound, which was sustained at Weathertop, he then hosted the feast that was held, and Frodo recovered. Elrond presided over the council of Elrond. During that meeting, he narrated what he knew of the history of Isildur and the Ring. He identified Aragorn as the heir of Isildur, and when Frodo ultimately volunteered to carry the Ring, Elrond affirmed this decision as correct. Elrond also appeared to have selected the members of the Fellowship other than Frodo and Sam, and he accepted Merry and Pippin only reluctantly. Later, Elrond sent his sons, Eladan and Elrohir, to join the Dúnedain rangers who rode through Road 2. Rohan, rather, to join Aragorn. Through Elrohir, Elrond advised Aragorn to take the paths of the dead. During the last debate, Elrohir supported Aragorn's decision to attack Mordor as a diversion to allow Frodo time to reach Mount doom, saying that this was Elrond's advice. After the passing of Sauron, Aragorn was crowned king of the new re reunited kingdom on May 1st, and according to his own promise, Elrond escorted Arwen to Lothlorien. They arrived on May 20th and Arwen went to Minas Tirith to wed Aragorn. Elrond 
parted from her in great sorrow. Elrond was one of the elves who took the white ship to Valinor along with Frodo, Gandalf, and the other wing bearers. The third age's end is marked by their departure. That is where I will stop for today. Thank you very much for listening, and I will see you next time.